now that we have configured our help desk, it's time to move on to the next element that is the auditorium. Now the auditorium is one of the most important elements that we'll be creating as a part of our virtual journey and it's also very simple and easy to configure all the settings that you need. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create an auditorium hotspot. Um, so this is going to configure our auditorium page. So all you have to do is click on this option here that is the second option under the auditorium tag uh, and we click on add auditorium hotspot which is the routine that we followed uh, to add a page configuration on all the three elements that we've designed so far i'm going to go ahead and put in my page title as auditorium uh, so i'm just you, know, you can type that here uh, but i already have that saved uh, in my suggestions here so i'm just going to use that the color that we want to pick for our auditorium uh, is going to be this. Uh, the color that we want to pick for our auditorium hotspot. So I want my hotspot to appear in this shade. The tooltip text is going to say click for auditorium. So this is what you have to type in here. Now you can customize this and this as well. Now we're going to add a background image, a background template which is a ready template that I have and like I mentioned um, these resources we're going to share with you so that you're equipped to start your virtual events right off the bat uh, and you can also uh, create your own unique designs by customizing uh, this stage design that we're just uploading onto our front end uh, so we, we have just put that image we have uploaded that onto our back end and that is going to be reflected on our front end now I'm going to quickly put in the coordinates that I need to position my hotspot on the lobby. So because my uh, auditorium hotspot is going to be reflected on my event lobby page, I want to pick the coordinate by opening the event lobby template on my paint window. And I'm just going to pick this value right here, which is 949679. The width and height ratio is, uh, you know, by default, I like to use 20 uh, as the width and height because uh, it looks virtually appealing. So you're welcome to customize your hotspot width and height, uh, but we recommend that you go ahead with 20 as your default value. And we're going to go ahead and save this now. What this will do is this will create an auditorium hotspot on my event lobby page. So there you go. Go. The auditorium hotspot is now active, and the moment I click on that, so the moment your user or a guest clicks onto that tab, this is where uh, they navigate to. So this is your auditorium page. Uh, this is the template that we have created in terms of um, the main screen, the video screen where we're going to stream our content um, or play our pre-recorded content or presentation or an AV that you want to play out here, all of that is possible. Uh, and this is where you put your branding. So your event branding, your sponsors, your client logos, all of that uh, you know, goes into here. So we've just added two banners for now. Uh, but you can customize this template to add as many branding locations as you like. Uh, you can also make a stage with two screens if that is what you want to do. Uh, so for this session, let's move ahead and add two banners here. Now something that you want to um, look at here is that uh, this image that you're looking at, you know, the slot one uh, for your image is in a perspective view. So this is different than your uh, flat laid out images um, that are in a basic rectangle. Uh, this is slightly tilted towards the right and this is slightly tilted towards the left. Uh, so how do you take the top left coordinates for an image in the perspective view. Now we're going to learn how to do that just now. All you need to do is open this template on paint, which I have done already. So there you go. Uh, and you see that I have created two lines here. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. You just select the pen tool. Uh, you click on the top left corner of your box. So because this is tilted towards the right, the perspective point, which is a reference point that we'll be using to create our width and height box uh, and also to get our coordinates, 
will appear on the right. So all you need to do is click on your top left corner and draw out this line from there. And now you want to click on your bottom right corner, which is the farthest out from the uh, you know, from the image. You want to click on that corner there. That is your bottom right corner, and you want to create this line here. Now, once we have done that, now it becomes very easy for me to put my cursor there and create a box that actually touches all of my corners. So the objective here is to make sure that the box that you're drawing touches all of your corners without, uh, you know, you see that uh, my bottom right corner is being left out if I match it to my bottom left corner. So I'm just going to increase that further down. And this, if you see, uh, ensures that all the corners are within this box. And no corners are venturing outside. So that is the objective that we want to achieve. Once you've done that, you would want to note your top left coordinates. So every time that you want to enter a value onto plateau uh, for an image, you're going to have to click, uh, you know, you're going to have to take the top left value. So uh, to do that, I'm just going to click on escape so that this box goes away. And I'm just going to click my mouse once and that should give me my value. So there you go, uh, 73 and Three. I'm going to put that um, onto my uh, plateau backend, which is my plateau admin portal. Uh, and we all know how to add uh, static images to your event page that is sponsor logos. This is the option that you click on whenever you want to add an image. So we're going to go ahead and add one to our auditorium. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this file here uh, and I'm going to open that. Now it's time to pick up those coordinates. So let's go back to paint again. Let's click on our reference point. And let's draw the box again. Now what you need to do is you need to click on this value here. Click on escape once and click your mouse cursor. And you should see that value at 72, 2, 2, 3. So I'm going to put that here and I'm quickly going to go back to paint to get my width and height ratio, which is the next value that I need. And that is 402 and 150. So I'm going to put that here. And make sure that you add this to your auditorium page. So if you create more than one auditoriums, uh, you can always number them accordingly. And if you want to add this to auditorium two, you would select auditorium two from your top down list here. But since we have only created one auditorium for this session, we're simply going to go ahead and click on auditorium. Sorry for that. Yeah, so just select auditorium and click on save. Now, that should put our banner right here. Let's check. And there you go. Your banner is here in that perspective. And if you see that the box that we created uh, has certain areas that has been omitted because this is a PNG file. So it's as simple as that. Uh, you can add perspective images to make your, uh, make your event page that more dynamic. Now I'm going to quickly add uh, another image that is my panel two. So let's do that now. Choose that file. Now for the coordinates, I'm going to refer to my spec sheet. So this is where I have all the coordinates pre-recorded. We are also going to share this with you so that you can start working with our default template that we're going to be providing to you. So I'm just going to pick the values from here. It's one, four, four, five. Five, three, nine, eight, and one, four, two. Uh, I think I missed, yeah, I missed this value right here. So I'm just going to correct that. Forgive me for making an error. And there 
it is i hope that fixes it we're going to add this to auditorium and we're going to enable this now so let's go ahead and say that there you go that should be reflected onto the second banner as well so that's how you add images in perspective we'll also be covering this again when we come to our exhibition booth setup so that is how you configure uh, your basic auditorium layout with the branding um, you, know, you can of course add more branding if you wish to uh, and now what we're going to learn is how to add a chat widget onto our auditorium page so that our attendees can interact amongst themselves uh, which is going to be slightly different than the chat widget that we added on the help desk uh, which was uh, for all of your users to interact with your brand representative here we can uh, you know add a widget that allows your users to interact amongst themselves as well and then we'll learn how to stream video and how to connect video conferencing platforms in a way that allows us to uh, display that data display that feed display that video content on our main screen here so we'll be learning that now so let's see how to add a chat box onto our auditorium page now doing that is very simple all you have to do is click on chat features what that is going to do is open this window and you click on this button here to add a chat feature um, now the first thing you want to do is enable this uh, is Q&A is something uh, where we configure the Q&A chat which will be coming to um, in a moment from now. Now this is going to ask you for a link. Uh, to get that link, we're going to have to go to a platform called as Dead Simple Chat. Now this is um, the third party application that we're going to be installing on our admin board. Now to do this um, all you have to do is sign in with your account uh, and there you go so this is how it looks this is your dashboard uh, if you want to create so this is a chat room that <coughs> I've already created uh, and if you want to create a new chat room all you have to do is click on chat rooms and that is going to open this widget here uh, so this is the button that you need to click on so go into chat rooms and just click on create chat rooms now what this is going to do is give you a form to create a new chat room now, I'm going to call this uh, as my audi chat um, so that I know uh, that particular property when it's created description is something that you can choose to add or not to add uh, and then you see these three options here uh, now this is where uh, our chat room becomes different than the one that we created on talk.to because this allows us to um, create an open chat room where your attendees can interact amongst themselves so when you do not click on any of these options here um, you know accept one-on-one -on -one chat even if we toggle that on uh, what that does is so with or without this um, the chat room that we're going to be creating uh, is going to be a public chat where uh, your attendees can interact amongst themselves so uh, so one-on-one -on -one chat is uh, you know if I enable that uh, that is also going to allow my attendees to chat with uh, another attendee uh, so that enables that feature from here so for now we're not going to select that we're just going to go ahead and pre-moderated chat room is something that we'll be doing using for the Q&A section and password protected chat room um, is self-explanatory it requires you to enter a password to enter the chat room so you can select that option if you want since we're making an open public chat room with no one-on-one -on -one chat now uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, my chat sidebar color now you can do that from here uh, and there is also another option that is uh, you know the custom CSS that allows me to uh, create a customized chat so we'll look at that shortly as well I'm just going to create this room for now uh, and when I do that it should give me this page this is where I can adjust the width and height uh, of my chat box so this is um, you know the live preview of our chat screen that is going to appear 
onto our page so all you need to do is copy this link right here on the left um, underneath the text that says your chat room is live at the unique url below so that is the url that we need to copy and paste here in the section that says link now because we are not configuring a q and a chat here i'm not going to select this option and i'm going to just go ahead and select a background fill color you can you know the drill there just pick a shade that you want from our html color codes website so i'm going to go ahead and select that and i'm going to copy the hex code and i'm going to put that here as my pill background color and i want my pill text color to be white so i'm going to use this and i'm going to add that over here the tooltip text is on chat so that is what will be displayed on the button that will be created for our chat now in the chat type since we've not selected one on one uh, while we were creating this room uh, what we're going to select here is one to many now this enables your group chat onto your auditorium uh, and we're just going to have to select a position so let's go ahead and put uh, 3 and 300 as our left value so uh, the top left coordinates i'm sure you remember how to pick that up from paint uh, so uh, you know if you want your widget to appear here so that's what the value that we've entered approximately somewhere around 300 um, so if you look at the uh, you know uh, the coordinate for the coordinate value here you'll see that it's um, you know pretty much around 300 and your first value becomes zero so you enter that value onto your back end and um, showing you know i want it to appear in the left side so i'm going to toggle that on and i'm going to put this on my auditorium um, and let's just save that and see what happens so when i refresh this now uh, what i'm going to get is uh, i'm going to get a widget that opens up my uh, dead simple chat box now you see that there is a lot of um, you know text here that is unnecessary the aesthetic value of this chat is not quite good enough so we're going to learn how to customize that and also how to change the nature of this chat box so right now this is set to a public chat where all your attendees can send their messages we want to change that uh, and we want to create a chat room that um, you know you can always just change the settings from here as well by opening the chat room settings uh, for auditorium chat but we're just going to go ahead and create a new room this time and let's call it audi chat 2 uh, description i'm going to put in as um, one, one plus public so this time you want to enable one-on-one -on -one chat between chat room members and you go ahead and select a color we're going to give you a much better and a more convenient option to do this as well which is the custom CSS. Now uh, let's try how the one in one chat looks like. So this is going to create a new chat room which is enabled for one on one chat. So you can see the preview right here. You see that this column has been added towards the left of your chat box with the invite user button that enables you to chat with another attendee uh, on the event page. So all you have to do is copy this link uh, from the left side of the window and we're going to go ahead and delete this chat now and we're going to add our new chat box that we just created so just paste that link over there um, i'm going to set this uh, values to pick up by default uh, tooltip text is going to be ordering chat and chat type now here you need to click on one on one so if you remember we clicked on one on many for the public chat but since this is one on one plus a public chat we're going to enable one to one in this widget here and of course uh, deselect the q and a option and we put in the top coordinates as 300 and show on the left and i'm going to assign this to the auditorium and now let's see uh, what happens on the auditorium page Oh, and there you go i think the text color has been picked up it's the same shade so let's just quickly copy this there and that should fix our problem 
go so there you go this is how your one-on-one um, -on -one chat along with your public chat opens up the page this is still not aesthetically correct we're going to be fixing that in a moment from now uh, but this is how you enable uh, your users to chat amongst themselves by clicking on you know, users you're going to see a list of options here when you have more users logged on to your platform and you can interact with them and send private messages uh, to them from here as well now what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to configure this uh, to be more uh, virtually appealing to do that we've created a custom css for you so this is the value this is uh, the code that we want to paste uh, the custom css box that we just saw so this time what i'm going to do is i'm not going to create a new chat i'm just going to edit this by clicking on chat room settings uh, and this time we're going to customize it so this becomes uh, you know your custom css i'm going to leave all of that uh, you know untouched a one one-on-one chat is something that you would want to select on and you want to paste oh sorry you want to paste this value um, right onto that box there and when you do that just click on update chat room and this picks up your new value and if you look at the preview here you'll see that the chat colors and all of the extra text from here has been omitted because of the custom css so let's see if that is even reflected on our auditorium and when i open the chat i see that the look and feel of this has completely changed uh, now i want to change my uh, column color here in the left that you see i do not like uh, you know the gray shade that we're seeing here uh, to do that all you have to do is go back to your chat room uh, and you know open your chat room settings go to your custom css now we don't want to remove anything from here we're just going to replace uh, our sidebar background color so that changes the uh, column color that we just saw which is gray so i'm going to be needing an rgb value now i'm going to get that from of course my html color codes tab also there are a bunch of other um, websites that you can use here in case you want to pick your brand colors and if you have your logo that you want to pick your color from um, there are a lot of sites available where you can just search uh, with the keywords that uh, you know you want a color code that picks up um, through a color picker and you can use that site to upload your image and then pick the color from there so for now i want to go ahead with this shade so this time i'm not going to copy the hex code i'm going to copy the rgb code and i'm going to go back to my backend and oh, yeah, sorry i'm going to go back to my uh, dead simple chat window uh, and here you see um, sidebar background color rgb uh, value has already been entered and we're going to replace that simply select all of that uh, and click on paste those values there and now when i click on update chat room uh, you see that the color has been changed so it's as simple as that just a few values to be copied from one window and pasted onto your uh, that simple widget and it picks up the new value here now what we're going to do is we're going to configure a q a chat so this so we've already seen how to customize a public chat we've seen how to customize a one-on-one -on -one chat now it's time to create a q and a chat so i'm going to go into my chat rooms and i'm going to delete one of these chats from here create a new chat room this time though oh, this is going to be my audi q and a so uh, you want this to be um you know set to a, a different setting this time so you have to click on the pre-moderated chat room option now what this does is uh, it's very simple whenever i put in a message on my chat window it's not going to be displayed uh, in the event to all the attendees until and unless it is approved by a moderator so uh, you know you might face this problem when you're hosting a q a session uh, where you have repetitive questions or you have questions that are not valid so those questions can be addressed by a moderator who would read out those questions to your speakers 
and they can um, you know then start queuing up those questions in an order that the speaker would address them in and that's all you need to do here just click on pre-moderated chat room and that will create your setting and i'm just going to copy my code from here again and i'm going to paste it there and of course the rgb value that we picked up is something that you have to edit here so we're going to just copy that by mistake i'm sorry so we're going to paste that here now what this is going to do is it's going to create a QA chat on my page so i'm going to copy this link again see that everything is okay in my preview here and i'm going to add that so this time i'm not going to delete this link i'm simply going to change the link to the new chat box that we created and I'm going to click on save. Now let's see what happens. So this time when you open your chat and when you try to type something, it's, um, you know, because I'm the admin now, it's simple and on this backend as well, uh, it gives me the option to approve this chat. So, so I'm seeing this message here simply because uh, I'm the uh, admin that created this widget on that simple chat. Uh, but if your attendee or if your guest uh, tries to type something here, they should simply get the message that waiting to be approved by the moderator. Uh, so that's how easy it is to make sure that only the questions that you approve or your moderator approve, uh, approves uh, are queued for the Q&A session. Now that we have learned all the three types of chats that would be needed for your virtual auditorium, it's time to learn how to configure uh, the audience poll. To do that, we're going to have to log on to a third party plugin um, that is power.io so once you're on that page um, you're going to have to log in and uh, with power.io uh, the limitations on the free so free version of this is uh, that we cannot add a lot of elements that we're going to be needing uh, so i'm going to be logging in with a paid account and uh, you know, you'll, have, you'll have to do the same uh, in case you choose to run your virtual event with power.io uh, and we're going to share a bunch of uh, uh, different plugins that we have used throughout the session with their prices to make it more convenient for you uh, and i'm going to just log into my account now and that should take me to my dashboard so once you're on the dashboard you're going to see all the different uh, you know polls that you have already created uh, but for a first time user you're not going to see much here process that you would follow in that case is just simply click on create new app and that should open the search window where you can search all the plugins that are available and i'm going to go ahead and search for a poll and i'm going to click on get app and that should add that to my account and create a poll section so what you're seeing here now is how the question is going to be displayed uh, to your audience so what we want to customize first uh, is the header that you're seeing here um, so just click on create your own poll and that should allow you to customize the form uh, and i'm going to go ahead and change the title from poll to audience poll uh, and also the color of that title so we're going to change the color to orange click on ok that should change that and we can also change the alignment so I've align that towards the center uh, and the description is you know you can uh, add anything so we could be please take this survey so that becomes our description there and you can also change uh, the description font color so we're going to change that as well and there you go now what we want to do next is uh, you can always go ahead and change the font as well there are a lot of options here uh, now we want to change the choices that you're seeing here the multiple choices uh, that are available right here to do that what you're going to do is click on done and then uh, you see uh, oh we can also change the button color here uh, so let's quickly do that uh, to make sure it looks like uh, there's a certain uniformity across the poll uh, and now what you're seeing here is page one so what this is is page one this is the first page that your audience is going to be seeing and you have your multiple choice element added below page one so this is 
of the multiple choice that you're seeing and this is what we want to edit now and this is where we'll be adding the questions as well so label font style uh, is basically uh, that serves as your question so I'm going to type in something there and that is going to be reflected on my form so I'm going to type a dummy question and then question type is again drop down multiple check boxes that is something that can be customized you can have a drop down here you can have multiple check boxes as well i'm going to go ahead with a multiple choice and uh, this is where you can configure your options so let's change that to a b c once you've done that you can also add another choice here uh, so that creates a new choice for you and that can be D. So when I do that, it's automatically reflected right here. So what we're going to do now is change the alignment that you're seeing here um, to horizontal. So that aligns all the options um, in a horizontal format. A make required field makes that question um, default that, you know, it makes it mandatory for the user to fill out his choice, his or her choice. And when I've done that, set half width is something that you do not want to touch really because it um, you know changes uh, how the form looks and then once you're done customizing this you can just click on done um, and that should um, you know and that should make you good to go now when i click on next it's going to take me to settings i do not really want to touch anything here in case you want uh, to you know send this poll through a mailchimp platform or some some platform of that sort you can always integrate integrate that here you also have the option to integrate google sheets and you have your advanced option but we are not going to be needing any of these settings so without changing any of them i'm just going to click on next uh, and then that is going to um, you know uh, give me the option to set up payment methods which is again something i do not require and then you come to the design tab so this is where you can add uh, design to your poll so what we're going to do here is um, you know you can change your app width um, and you can change your uh, plugin padding as well so all of that is possible uh, i like the default value that it picks up so i'm not going to change that and then you have your entrance animations that you can add to your poll uh, so let's go with the default here uh, and now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to change the um, you know you can always change your background color your background shadow um, you can do all of that from here you can also change um, you know the kind of inputs that you're getting uh, and the label text that you're seeing here uh, we can change that color to orange as well um, you know but let's just go ahead with black for now and um, you can also change your input text color from here uh, to whatever shade you need that to be um, so once you've done that that would be immediately reflected uh, but uh, you know since we do not have a text box here the input is not going to be picked up right now um, so that's how easy it is to configure your uh, poll design as well uh, now when we are done doing that we're going to publish this poll uh, so when you click on publish it generates a code that you can share uh, to add that to the various platforms that you see here but since we're adding this to our backend we're going to need a link that you can um, generate by clicking on share app in the publish section so that generates your shareable link that we will then copy uh, and just go under polls uh, you know uh, in the auditorium section you should see polls right here in this list so when you click on polls uh, it should open this window here and when you click on add poll it should ask you for that link uh, now i can insert multiple links here um, just by inserting a comma between the two links that I'm adding and that will just display these two forms one after the other in the widget that opens uh, but I'm not doing that now just added a single page uh, and I'm just going to quickly um, copy these colors for our um, button to be displayed and I'm going to call this as audio poll which is the tool tab that will be displayed on my button and my top value is going to be 300 as well um, just like what we added for our auditorium chat but this time it is going to be displayed on the right in my auditorium so that's it 
uh, we've just configured our first poll let's see if that is um, you get that notification as soon as it's done now let's see if that is reflected here and there you go your audi poll has been added to your page and that is your first question now we're going to learn how to add multiple questions here with different pages so let's go back to our widget here uh, and there you go so you see all of those settings are still safe here under untitled poll so i'm just going to name that to plateau poll so this saves that project that particular plugin with this name so it's easier to track once you have more than one plugins running on your dashboard uh, now what we want to do next is uh, we want to add another page for a different question that we want to ask so doing that so you can add an element through here uh, but we do not recommend doing that because it sort of um, you know makes the whole thing uh, chaotic in a way so it's always better to just add another page here and that is displayed as page number two and there you go that is your second question that you can use uh, and this is a progress bar that i've added from my design page that i'll just show you how to do that uh, and now you'd want to add a question here so you just select on add element and you can select anything so this time we'll go ahead with multiple check boxes uh, or you can you know use your multiple choice you have your drop down this is the same drill that we did last time uh, and you can you know again configure your questions and your options so i'm going to change my question to what is the most used number and i'm going to add my options here so one five nine so we've done that and you can see i'm going to change the uh, you know alignment from this option here uh, and uh, that pretty much covers everything uh, and now we're going to click on done so what this is going to do is it's going to add another page now we're quickly going to add a few more pages so i've got five pages here so my entire poll becomes of five different pages with five different sets of questions so on my page three i'm going to add an element quickly um, and i'm going to go ahead with multiple choice i'm going to leave that to default for now the one here it's going to be a drop down in this case and there we go that should do it and then for the final page we're going to add another element um, and this time we're going to add the ratings option here um, so that's it that's how simple it is and now i now that i've added five pages here with five different sets of questions i'm going to click on next uh, and, you know, these are the settings that we do not touch and then when i'm on design uh, i've got a new option here pages now what this does is you know this is where i added the progress bar uh, which you can customize in the terms of number of pages in terms of number of questions or the percentage so once you've done um, you know adding that just click on done and that should give you the option to publish now when you publish all you have to do is go into share app click on this link here and paste this onto our chat widget where we just added that link i'm going to go ahead and add this here and i'm going to save this now let's see what happens so now when i open the audi poll um, i get um, you know my first question and when i answer that and click on next it takes me to my next question so that's how you design your entire survey um, or your entire list of questions that you want to you know, add to this uh, that completes your uh, entire poll section so that's how you add poll uh, onto your page uh, in case you want to add multiple polls you can do that as well uh, to do that you simply open the link here uh, and i'm going to quickly navigate to my uh, dashboard that you can access from here this icon right here and i'm going to copy a few codes from existing polls that i have here um, so i'm just going to click on edit and that should open the window that we've been working on and i'm quickly going to go to publish and i'm going to copy uh, you know the link from here uh, under share 
app that will generate the link that you want to copy and add on back end. So this uh, is going to add that link. So I can add as many uh, of these links that I want here, just followed by a uh, you know a simple comma and no spaces. Forgive me for that. I'm habituated to add spaces after a comma. Uh, but you do not need to do that just put in a comma between two links and you should be good to go uh, so let's see how that looks now uh, it's not something that we would recommend doing because it really you know sort of uh, you know crowds your entire window uh, so it's always recommended to make different pages uh, for different polls but in you know of course if you have more than one survey or more than one of you know type of poll that you want to add you can do that here by simply creating as many uh, plugins that you want here and then copying the link and then pasting them here um, simply separated by a comma so that's it that's how simple it is um, to add and customize um, your audio poll now that we have successfully created our auditorium page with the branding and um, we've also added a couple of chat boxes here for your Q&A session and your public chat as well as one-on-one -on -one chat and we've added an audio poll here as well. Uh, we're going to dive into the live streaming section that displays our live stream onto our main screen here. Now doing that might seem a bit complex as first there is a lot of phobia around um, streaming and the whole process of it but I'm just going to show you how uh, quick and easy that really is so let's just go to our admin portal um, and under the auditorium tag here you should find live streaming and there's another option that configures your zoom call directly which we'll be covering at a later stage so click on live streaming and that should take you to this window from where you can add um, that configuration now what you're seeing here is the Vimeo embed code uh, now the Vimeo embed code is something that you want to use when you're streaming from Vimeo as your streaming platform but in this case we're creating a custom live stream for which I just select live stream from this drop down here uh, and here is where I want to put my HLS link now an HLS link is nothing but an HTTP video a link that is generated uh, by a push or pull uh, third party client and it's very easy to get that link uh, to do that we're just going to have to uh, create an account on Wowza so uh, let's set that up all you have to do is uh, once you open this site all you have to do is click on try it for free um, and if you want to stream your event from here uh, we recommend purchasing um, a premium account on Wowza because the trial version only allows you to stream for about 15 minutes now we're going to give you all the details of all the clients that you have seen the third-party applications or websites uh, that you have seen during the course of this tutorial so uh, for a test stream the free trial should be good enough so I'm going to go ahead and open that uh, and for a first-time user you would see a form here that you would have to fill out to register uh, because I've already signed in I'm just going to launch my Wowza streaming cloud now once you're on this page here um, what you would want to do is create a live stream so that is very simple to do uh, from this option here in the top right uh, all you need to do is from the drop down select add live stream and that should take you to this page here now these are the only five settings that you need to take care of and we have made this job very easy for you by creating a supporting document that um, you know takes care of all the steps that you need to follow so everything that I'm going to explain to you now is already on this document that will share with you uh, so the first thing that you need to do is name your stream so we're going to call this plateau stream test so once you set that name there uh, what you would want to do next is click on your location so I'm based in India so I'm going to go ahead with Asia Pacific and that's all you need to do on the first step for the second step you would want to select the type of stream that you would be running um, so uh, because we're creating a custom stream you would have to select this option here that says other RTMP uh, once you've selected other RTMP from here uh, the rest of the settings for a free version are going to be default you cannot click on pass through or 24 by 7 billing mode uh, which is only available in the premium account so pay as you go should work fine for now 
uh, an adaptive bitrate is something that um, you do not want to change even if you uh, opt for a full version uh, and then push stream is something that we want to click on um, uh, in this section here so if I click on pull stream I'm going to have to put in an RTMP code here but I want to generate an RTMP code from Wowza so I'm going to have to click on push stream now what that is going to do is uh, it's going to uh, and you want to select push directly to Wowza streaming cloud once you have done that um, you would want to select on this option here that says create an HLS stream with reduced latency this is where we're going to get our HLS link from uh, and aspect ratio is 16 is to 9 which is perfect for displaying video and other content um, and do you want to create a watch stream is something that you do not want to click on uh, if you wish to record this it's going to use your uh, Wowza resource and record that stream for you as well so you can select that if you wish to record your session now what type of closed uh, captions does the stream have so if your stream if your video content is going to be having closed captions uh, you would have to select the extension or the format here since we're going to be running a zoom call on our Wowza platform we do not have um, any um, closed captions so I'm going to go ahead now this is important to do just click on disable authentication um, so that we can directly uh, copy the feed from our HLS link and that's all so a quick run through just click on other RTMP here uh, pay as you go adaptive byte rate so the first option adaptive bit rate uh, first option here as well uh, with your push stream so push directly to Wowza streaming cloud and yes I want to create an HLS stream key and there you go do not select these two options and um, you know you're good to go just click on disable authentication and click on next that should take you to your playback setting now I want my um, you know player uh, to run on my original HTML file player so I'm not going to change that setting there I'm not going to change the width of my player this is um, good enough to run our test feed so I do not want to change anything there as well uh, display a countdown clock in the player before the event so in case you want to configure a countdown clock that starts right before your feed um, you can do that from here but we are we'll be doing that from our OBS software so I'm going to select no here uh, and um, this is um, you know an option to add your display poster or your logo during the event or you can choose simply upload your logo from here and select the corner in which you want that to be displayed so for this particular test run we are not going to be using these settings but these um, would come pretty handy when you're running your live event so I'm going to click on next and that should take me to my hosted page settings um, now once I'm on this page what I want to do is do you want um, browser streaming cloud to host a web page that plays your video you simply click um, no on that uh, option and all of the other settings are going to go away so just select on no and click on next so this is going to give me an option to review all of the settings that I've just configured and uh, I'm sure this is pretty good to go ahead with so just click on finish and that should create your RTMP link so once that is finished um, you should see this page here and you should see your server that you just created right here plateau stream test um, now what I want to do for my next step is copy this RTMP link from here um, and this is um, the link that I'm going to be adding onto my next software that takes care of my next phase that is my virtual event show running um, that is OBS so once we have uh, so this is your RTMP link is something that you would want to add to OBS in the next step that we'll see shortly and this is your HLS link um, this is the link that you want to copy and put on your um, admin portal in this section here in the second option that says link because we are using a live stream and not Vimeo embed code once you have done that um, you know you're, um, it's going to fetch that information uh, from Wowza and to uh, you know push that video stream onto Wowza which we can see from here once we start our live stream we're going to need something um, called as an OBS software which is very easy to use and we're going to learn how to do that now 